welcome to the first part of lecture 10, which is about a summary of everything we have covered so far. Uh, and this lecture part, this lecture module contains two parts. First, I'll really just summarize and give a short outlook where we're heading in the second half of the course. And then I'll discuss potential exam content. Now we'll first go a bit through the through the learning outcomes and discuss what we have covered, what we haven't covered. Uh, in terms of knowledge and comprehension, we have actually covered a bit of most of the things. Uh, so you should be able to tell what a client side, web, uh, server side web application is, or what client server side execution means. Uh, you should be able to summarize HTTP requests and responses to some extent. There will be more coming on this, so. So far, you don't know this perfectly. Uh, similarly, you know the HTTP verbs a little bit more is coming. Uh, and the same applies here. So the different features, the different properties, uh, are, for example, things like idempotence and so on, that's coming in more detail. Um, what is not coming in much more detail is this one here. So you should now know the key language concepts of HTML, CSS and JavaScript, especially after you're done with assignment two. So this of course still takes a bit of practice. JavaScript will cover in a bit more depth in the server side lectures. Uh, accessibility we have discussed and you should be able to give some examples for code there as well. So for example, CSS media queries. Um, and given that you have worked a bit now with, with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, you should be able to predict uh, how a website looks like or behaves based on the source code. And then we have got a bit into testing. There is more of that coming as well. What we haven't covered yet is REST. That's part of uh, server-side execution and then the security topics, which has two specific lectures. Uh, but otherwise, these knowledge and comprehension outcomes are already covered quite well. Application analysis, there's lots of stuff to do left. Uh, so we have done the basics, uh, develop basic client-side applications using HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Again, uh, after assignment two, you should be able to understand these things or be able to do them. Uh, testing, we actually haven't covered much in practice. This might come in assignment three. Otherwise, uh, we won't do practical stuff on client-side testing, let's see. And you should be able to analyze source code for errors. Uh, then there's a whole lot of stuff that we'll get into uh, in the later lectures and assignments. Now, then the final one, since there's an evaluation, you'll, even though we have covered quite some of them, there, there will be more things that you'll learn here in addition. So for example, propose improvements to web application source code. You should be able to do a bit, uh, but of course we will add the server side aspects to that. Uh, that's true for almost all of them. Uh, the last one I want to discuss because it hasn't been very explicit maybe, but uh, we have discussed how web applications play uh, a societal role because they are accessible to everyone and they should be accessible to everyone uh, and they become more and more important. So there is some kind of responsibility of doing web development properly. Uh, we will add uh, another dimension to this when we get to security, of course. Now, we are pretty much according to schedule. We had a bit of hiccup because I was sick, um, but that's what the buffer lectures are for, so we're still doing well. Uh, we've covered the foundations, which was the introduction lecture where we just did history of the web, and then the networking basics of HTTP. Um, we have discussed all the front end topics, so everything that runs on the client, HTML for structure, CSS for styling, JavaScript for behavior. Um, and now we'll go into the back end, so everything that runs on the server. Uh, and we'll have two lectures on something that is called REST, which is a specific style of structuring web applications. And then we do some server-side JavaScript, so executing JavaScript on the server, which is slightly different. Uh, test and debugging, we had one lecture for client-side testing. We will have two more when we get to server-side testing. So you'll get some more practice in this. And then finally, we'll have two whole lectures on web security. Uh, the projects, the assignments, they are uh, pretty much aligning with the different lectures. So the first two assignments, they were in the front end part, of course. So they cover all of these topics. The third one will be in the back end. So you have to write a server-side application. 
I might add some client-side testing to that. I have not decided yet, but we'll see. And then the fourth assignment is most likely backend testing. So it's testing specifically for the server side with probably some addition of security. We'll see about that. Okay, so that's the plan. Now I'll run you through the different lectures that we have done and what we what are the key concepts that are important. Uh, so in the networking lecture, we covered a bit of the internet, how the internet works uh, in terms of protocols and techniques. Uh, so what are host names, what are IP addresses? Uh, we discussed that there is the TCP IP protocol stack, which is the, the protocols that are used for directing packages, basically. Um, and a bit the layers of this protocol stack. Uh, all of this is not super important, it's just to give you a bit of background there, otherwise you'll learn more of that uh, in a networking course. And then you should be familiar with the client-server model, that there is a client that sends a request and the server answers, and there might be lots of intermediate servers in between. Uh, but this is how we often look at it. Um, the important thing here is that the client is the one that requests something, the server answers. So the server typically does not send the request to the client. Then we went into HTTP uh, briefly. So we, we discussed that there are HTTP requests and responses, what is in them uh, and what are, for example, typical headers that they have, typical metadata. Uh, then we went through different methods like get, post, put, and so on, uh, the different verbs. And you will hear much more of that. Uh, so far, we haven't done much. And we have covered a bit of cookies, so the way for a server to keep track of the client by storing data on the client. Uh, again, you will probably understand this a bit more when we get to security, because then we will discuss it again. Uh, the HTTP part is definitely the most important part for this course. So that's uh, also where, for example, the exam questions are located. Uh, then we covered a part of HTML covered a lot of different tags, so the different tags you can have in, in HTML code, uh, attributes of tags, for example, the ID, uh, class and ID. So those are things we covered uh, generally how HTML is structured, that you have the doc type, the HTML tag, the head and the body and so on, and that generally tags can be nested. Uh, we looked a bit what's in the header that you, for example, have the title, you can have meta information and so on. Uh, and then a lot of what I discussed went into semantics that, uh, that really the importance in HTML is not how things are formatted because you can change that. Uh, the important thing is what the tags mean. So they have a meaning and that's relevant. Then I went into block and inline elements and I repeated that a lot in CSS as well. So the difference between how elements are displayed, uh, that's very important to properly understand how, how HTML layouting works and to then change it successfully in CSS. Uh, no. So that's that's a very important thing. Uh, we discussed the validator that you, that is good to, uh, to have valid HTML code because it can uh, prevent errors later on in your CSS or JavaScript. Uh, and then we went into the topic of accessibility, that you have certain means to enrich your HTML code so that automated tools can read it and understand it. For example, by using semantic tags or using uh, attributes that supply extra information like the alt attribute in an image. The next block was on the CSS cascading style sheets. So it was all about how do you specify CSS internally, inline, externally? Uh, we looked at the, at the rule sets, at the terminology of CSS, like what is a rule set, what is a declaration? Um, we looked at how are the, how is the cascade determined? So if you have multiple uh, properties, multiple declarations that, that are conflicting, which one is the important one? Um, then we looked at how to select the element you want to select, so there are different ways of doing that. Uh, and you can do that quite complicated by using combinators or attribute selectors, or even pseudo classes and pseudo elements. So this can get quite detailed. Uh, we, we discussed a bit that the importance of relative and absolute length so that you have uh, different size measures and they have certain advantages or disadvantages. 
Uh, then, as you see here in the picture, we discussed the box model, so that uh, explains how content in HTML is rendered, that you have the content, you have a certain padding within the element, you have a border around the element, and then you have margin, which is the space around surrounding the element. Uh, so again, this is an important concept that you need to understand in order to properly lay out things. Um, we then discussed how to do positioning in CSS, uh, a bit of flow, the floats, positioning, uh, but then also finally Flexbox, which is a newer and much easier way in many ways. Um, and last but not least, we went into responsive web design using media queries to have kind of conditional CSS code that is only active in certain conditions. Now, the last part of this kind of foundations of, of web programming on the client side was JavaScript. Um, and we started off discussing what the difference is between executing JavaScript on the client or on the server. Uh, we discussed the DOM, so that the document object model, the tree of tags uh, and the API that you have to modify it. Uh, and then we went into how to actually write JavaScript. So how to specify it, that you have the script tags or you just link a, an external file. Uh, the different methods of ex uh, accessing the DOM, like identifying elements, adding new elements or so on. Uh, we went into the event-driven paradigm. So how to trigger events, uh, user events, how to use them for triggering JavaScript. So if I click on a button, then a function gets executed and so on. So this is one of the main important ways to run JavaScript uh, in the browser with the client. Uh, then we went a little bit into the internals of JavaScript, so that the different types that exist, how they are converted to each other, uh, how that works. And then the things that often cause confusion, like the comparison that you have, the two different comparator uh, operators like the double equals and the triple equals, for example, uh, the different scopes that, for example, the if you have a variable declaration within an if block, uh, it's not just valid within that if block, but also outside, which is different compared to many other programming languages. Uh, and finally, also very important hoisting. So the fact that JavaScript takes variables and pulls them all the way up to the block then we discussed for, uh, callbacks, so the way of asynchronously executing JavaScript code, um, or rather reacting to the results of asynchronous execution. It's a very important thing. Uh, and then related to that, the execution of JavaScript explaining why we have this asynchronous behavior, because you essentially have uh, external web APIs that are not in the single thread. So you have uh, behavior that might sound strange sometimes. Finally, we did Ajax, asynchronous JavaScript and XML. So a technique to run requests while the, the script is already loaded, uh, which is a very useful thing to, to get new information, new data from the server without reloading the website is a very important technique. Okay, so that was JavaScript. And then the last part, the last uh, topic lecture we did uh, just last week was on client-side testing and debugging. There was a bit of theory. So what, are, what different testing levels do we have? What kind of testing can we do? What kind of processes do we have? And so on, very briefly. Uh, then we went into debugging, showing uh, the, the rudimentary approach to just do console logs, but then showing the debugger as well. Uh, and if I won't include it in the assignments, then I still encourage you a lot to get going with that. For example, in assignment two, it will save you massive amounts of time, it's guaranteed. Uh, a bit of unit testing with Mocha and Chai. These were just example libraries, uh, but unit testing frameworks all look very similar. So there is no surprise there. Uh, we, we looked a bit into that and then I did a demo of Selenium and Sikuli, so tools for system acceptance testing that are really on the UI level that uh, click on stuff and they don't go too much into the internals of a programming language. So that's what we did. Um, it's already quite a lot. 
But in terms of the exam, the uh, well, the lectures are all relevant to things I have discussed. In terms of literature so far, the only source that is relevant to the exam is this one here. That's the link on accessibility, uh, which I believe was in the HTML lecture. So that's the only one that is exam relevant. There will be some more things in backend and security. So I think there are two more sources that I want you to read for the exam, but otherwise there won't be much literature that you have to read. So that's not too bad. So what happens now? We have uh, essentially three blocks left to do. The first one is, and that's the biggest one by far, is backend. So we go to the server side and do stuff there. Uh, also connected to that is the, the remainder of testing and debugging, which is all on the server side. So we'll, we'll go away from the client. Uh, and then as a last part, we'll do web security, which is a mix of everything. Uh, because security usually happens at all levels. You can do something wrong at the client. You can do something wrong uh, on the server. You can do something wrong in your network. So security is everywhere. So that's what's coming. Um, in terms of our client server model, what we have done so far is basically always send a request to the server. So for example, we have opened an HTML file and said, please display this. Uh, the server has answered, said, here is your HTML file. And then usually that HTML file contains other stuff like CSS and JavaScript. So we're actually sending other requests to get those things as well. Uh, then we have all those files in our client. And what happens is then that we run them in the browser and the browser knows HTML. So it can display it. It understands CSS and it has a JavaScript engine to execute this. So that's basically what has happened. Uh, and then of course, if we use Ajax, we also can, from within the JavaScript, maybe send another request or another 10. That's what we have done so far. What we'll do now is we'll forget about the client. So there are requests coming and we send responses back on the server, but we don't care anymore about the client. We do everything on the server. And we don't care about HTML and CSS anymore because this is in the background, so we don't need to display anything. We only care about JavaScript, so we only do programming. Uh, and this does not run in the browser anymore, and it runs in Node.js, which is just a JavaScript runtime environment. So this is very similar to, uh, for example, what you have done in Python programming. You have Python scripts, and you execute them with Python in that case. So in our case, we have JavaScript files and we execute them with Node.js, but the way you program, the way you run this is much closer to uh, traditional programming compared to uh, what we did so far. So that will be much more familiar to many of you. Um, that being said, the JavaScript files will look slightly different. So it might be confusing in the beginning, uh, but hopefully that changes quickly. And the other thing that's very different to uh, doing Python, at least for most of you, is that one of the main things we do on the server is we want to react to responses. So we write uh, to requests. So we write code that reacts whenever uh, an HTTP request comes in. So that's one of the uh, one of the main roles of what we do. Of course, in practice, it can be that the majority of the JavaScript here has nothing to do with the actual request but you still have to have some code that is able to handle incoming requests and sends the responses back. So that's an important thing. Okay, so that's uh, what's the plan essentially. And I'm looking forward to that part.